السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام و رحمۃ اللہ از سعیدنا خیدر اسٹیشن آلسو انہیریٹیبل دا اسٹیشن آف خیدر سعید خیدر علیہ السلام ہز اسٹیشن دا شیخ ابان سین این برزاک از انہیریٹیبل بیکاز ہی از جسٹ ون آف اللہ سروینٹس سو دا طریقہ And Sayyidina Khidr is in the shajara of Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah and that his reality is inherited to the shaykhs of the tariqah. That's why he's in the chain, Allah put Sayyidina Abbas Khidr in the chain of Naqshbandiyah. And what they call a wasty connection is that through the muraqabah, through the meditation all shaykhs and students have to connect into the world of light which has no time. The shaykhs are operating in the reality of the world of light and this is their most powerful form, not the world of form. The world of form is like an when you look at an iceberg you look, oh look it's just like a tiny thing, look, it looks how small this iceberg is and they go and they say some are like an entire continent is underwater ice that you can't see. There are mountains under the water that disguise the size of that little tip that you're looking at. Means the one whom activates their soul, the immensity of the power of the soul, it can't be understood by the physicality. And so this reality is important to unlock. So anyone whom opens their heart and contemplates and makes their connection with the heart, then they're inheriting from that reality because they begin to operate from their heart, they begin to witness from their heart and they begin to companion… to keep the companionship of these awliya in the world of light, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi last week you spoke of neural lights. If our neural lights are unactivated or dull, how can we sharpen it? Yeah, you saw that? <laughs> neural lights. That, how they found that? That the tariqah and ancient teachings and Prophet teaching that your heart is what thinks for you, not only your head. The capacity of your head is not to be used as a thinking and corn. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Contemplating. So then scientists found that actually the heart has what they said, 40,000 neural lights And these were the same element that they found within the brain that gives the capacity to contemplate, to think and to put out a reaction to the thought. So all along Prophet been teaching, your heart is where you're thinking. The one who meditates and contemplates and connects the heart to the Divine Server, then the choices they're making from the heart giving their command from the heart will organize and manage the galaxy that Allah has given to us. So management of the organs and the head must come from the heart. The Divine System is what? The command comes to the sun and then goes out to the eleven planets <coughs> and that's Surat Al-Qadr. That Allah describes Malaika wa rub idni rabbihim kullin am. Salamun hiya. This salam means every command to the angel in the ruh is the station of the sun. 
an unseen Wi-Fi of energy is flowing with all the commands of what the earth will do, what the moon will do, what every inhabitant will do, what everything between them will do all the way to the farthest part of this galaxy. Wherever this sun's command is, is sending out its Wi-Fi giving its commands and Surat al-Qadr is a description of this Wi-Fi, Divinely Wi-Fi. So it means this system of energy is important to understand and how to open that reality. Then Allah said, if you want to enter into that command at least put yourself under the same authority. So those who want to inherit the greater reality they can't keep thinking from their head. You're going to get uh, dementia and Alzheimer's because you're putting too much frequency onto your head too much energy upon your head and the head wasn't designed to do the computations. The head was merely to take the reflection of the knowledges that were in the heart of the servant. So when they activate the neural lights within their heart and they meditate and enter into their consciousness, connect with the greater consciousness because Allah didn't give you your soul to go and destroy it. It's like somebody giving you your entire inheritance at 10 years old. Well you would have sold it for a pack of gum, Allah doesn't give you but just a, a little bit of change. The greater soul is always in the heavens under Allah's command that it won't be given and the trust won't be given until the person has reached the maturity. So as soon as they meditate and contemplate then the, the subconscious and the thought and the energy of this soul has to connect with the greater soul and understand its purpose, understand the commands, understand the guidance. But it requires the shaykhs and the interdimensional understandings of light. So when they connect with the shaykh, the shaykh's light comes to facilitate the connection to their own reality and then to take from that world of light, operate and be inspired from the world of light. And then what mm. happens to their heart? It becomes like a sun filled with command, filled with lights. Those lights illuminate the head and then what is in the heart illuminates out of their head and their face, their tongue. Means then all the faculties that Allah dressed is illuminated by their heart. If Allah قَالْبِ mu'min baytullah, if the heart of the mu'min is the house of Allah that becomes then Hadith al-Qudsi. Because Allah resides within the heart, putting that light and energy in Muhammadun Rasulullah within the heart of the servant, then what happens? Their hearing, Allah becomes their hearing because the light is already in the heart. Allah then sends to the eyes and becomes, I become the seeing, I become the hearing, I become the breath of the servant, I become the hands in which they feel, the feet in which they move, so much so that they become Rabbaniyoon and they have power of kun fayakun because Allah resides already within their heart. The light is illuminating through the faculties and everything then is being dressed by Allah's Divinely lights. So those are important to operate from the heart and not the head. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi when we meditate how can we differentiate by the brain of the head versus the brain of the heart? By connecting with the shaykh. As soon as you connect with the shaykh that you're visualizing, bending your head, not trying to see out through your eyes but asking for the madad of the shaykh to be present with you and that you start doing your awrad, your zikr, making your connection and you keep struggling to make the connection, 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 connection then people give up. But if they are persistent they make the connection that send your light into my heart and that to keep the companionship. If you don't keep the companionship of the shaykh, shaitan is sitting right there giving you whimsical imaginations. You're the greatest, you're best, you're flying, here's a sword, here's a jubba. The shaykh is not going to say that to you. So that's why it's so difficult but they give up and they just sit in the silence and the darkness by themselves and shaitan is playing with them the whole time. And that's the danger, that's, that's why it's not prescribed. Allah says in Qur'an, what? Itaqullah wa qunu ma asadiqeen Have a consciousness and keep the company of the sadiq. But Allah's not talking about physical company only, 
because nothing of Allah is physical. So this must be a command in the spiritual realm. The have consciousness of Allah means be good mannered, conscious servant and asking, Ya Rabbi I want to be in the company of your Salihin and Sadiq, truthful servants and their truth is in their actions and in their deeds, they're truthful. And we say it in our salah, right? In our salah at the end in tahiyyat we say, As Salaamu Alaika Ayyuhan Nabi wa ibadullahi salihin. We're giving them salams but we're not seeing them. So Allah has it all already around us, we now just have to meditate and I want to see Prophet I'm giving my shahada every day, five times a day to Prophet I must make my connection to see Prophet Then my Islam will become real, how can I give shahada to that which I don't see? Wa ibadullahi salihin. How come I don't see my ibadullahi salihin? How many are there? Are there three ibadullahi salihin in front of you? Or 124,000 companions all around you? So why you don't open your heart to find out how many there are in front of you? InshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, we don't feel anything during meditation but feel inspired to read levels of the heart. Does that indicate the anal yaqeen is opening? Thank you from this low student. Yeah, I, did, you, I just described <laughs> that you're going to meditate but you're not going to feel anything because <clears throat> it's not an easy state. It doesn't mean that, uh, that we just decide we're going to meditate and now I'm going to feel everything. So it's a matter of persistence that uh, I'm honest with myself, I'm very dirty, I'm nothing, I'm no one. I, Ya Rabbi just connect my heart, I want to, to be in the presence of the shaykh, I do my awrad, I do my breathing and then I stop and I finish my awrad and that's it. And I do that every day, every day, every day and then I have this love for Prophet I listen to salawats, I connect with the shaykh, I say that I keep us a Rosa Sharif and that I, I talk to Prophet that, oh I'm a sinning servant, I've done many bad things and go into sujood and cry to Allah Build a relationship in this world of light until you do what you do alone with your Lord. You know in the presence of Allah you're in sujood, in the presence of Prophet you're at the Rosa Sharif, in the presence of the shaykhs that send your light and your fires to me, I'm nothing, I'm no one. So this is a continuous process of, of tafakkur and contemplation. And then of course I want to illuminate and I start to read and educate myself in the shaykh's teachings. So if I want the understanding of the qalb, I start to read about the qalb. If I want the understanding of the energy, I read the book on energy. If I want to understand the meditation which is the foundation of knowledge because you can't get the knowledge of the heart without understanding the tafakkur, it's encrypted. We gave that talk before, so the shaykh's knowledge is encrypted. You have a cold wallet and then you have your active app. So by coming online you're on our active app. But if you want the knowledges you have to connect to his, the cold wallet where his knowledges are stored on his heart. Once you make your connection and they see that the person is of that reality and sincerity, those knowledges have to be downloaded. So the, the live app it has a lot of functionality but it's not the, the goods, they, otherwise everybody would come steal it and go. So Allah has Divine blockchains, Allah has all of this technology first. Only now because the Kingdom of God is coming they're understanding these technologies, right? Qur'an is a blockchain, nobody can alter the Qur'an because everybody is a hafiz. So means they all have portions of the Qur'an locked on their heart. Anyone tries to change one letter, 900 million others will say, you're wrong and get rid of them. So Allah why these technologies are coming now is because the game is over. So these are heavenly technologies where not a cent moves without Allah knowing. Does any say? that I know what's under the grain of a mustard seed. People thought, oh how Allah's going to know. Now they have a coin coming out from the government 
that if you send one dollar here and one dollar there, they know exactly who got what dollar. Well, isn't that a sign of the heavenly kingdom? Where Allah has been telling us all along, I know everything. I know who you sent that to, who they received it, what they gave, what they didn't give. So all of this was a symbol of God's kingdom is coming and all His technology is coming. And that's why apply the understanding of these technologies to what Prophet brought, right? Do you think the soul of Prophet is not more powerful than your iPhone? Now I can get a Qur'an in any language that exists upon this earth. I just download the app. You don't think the soul of Prophet is the master unit of this reality? That anytime you want Qur'an it has to be downloaded from where? The Prophet has to send a connection to the servant. And that's why we said the Qur'an is reading you, you're not reading the Qur'an, right? What do you call biometric? Now we understand biometric, oh look it looks at my finger, it looks at my face. You don't think all this biometric coded on the Qur'an? Otherwise then every intelligence office in the world would be reading Qur'an and understanding it. They don't understand nothing from Qur'an because the Qur'an has to read them. Looks into their face and says, for you Furqan, right and wrong, oh there's a lot of punishment in this book, I don't want to read it. Because what it's scanned it will tell you. So no, all the technologies come from the heavens. And everybody wants to communicate and all their phones are, are sending video and, and text. And we're saying, why don't you communicate with one of Allah's technologies? More powerful than the bitten apple that got us all here, <laughs> right? The unbitten apple is, is insan, wa lakul karamna bani adam. Allah's servant that He loves, more powerful than any of these mobile phones. They can send text message, they can send video message, they can send the airdrop, they can send anything. Imagine you're able to drop from your phone to your phone an image and you think the shaykh can't drop an image into your heart? Say, no it's not possible, but you're both parastin, your idol worshipper because you give more power to these idols than to Allah any technology, any technology you see Allah has it more powerful and it only a drop of it came onto this earth. Yeah, imagine air dropping, just boom put into your heart a knowledge. Now when the jinn come they're all going to bow down and say, oh my God this is astonishing, right? The jinn are going to do that to everybody, air drop not thoughts into people's hearts, air drop this, knowledges, everything. And that's how Dajjal's forces will be moving through these jinn. But this is the knowledges and uloom that came from heavens, inshaAllah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa rahmatullah <coughs> Can I use my grandfather's Qur'an and clothes who passed away many years back? Is it good or bad and will it have energies flowing? <laughs> that you have to answer yourself. <laughs> if your grandfather was good, then he yeah, is good. If your grandfather was notorious, then <laughs> no, you won't have a good time. So you, you will inherit the energy of anything that you use, everything has an energy within it. There are people who have pictures of relatives doing, you know, inappropriate things and you can feel the inappropriate energies coming from that. Everything has an energy. So you know we pick and choose what has the best energy and try to be around things that are of a holy nature, things that are what we call relics by pious people, the Qur'an of pious people, written by pious people. Now you can't even find a handwritten Qur'an, means that by a pious person a handwritten Qur'an has immense value, immense lights and barakahs and, and blessings. So the relics and clothing and, and the, the articles of worship by pious people then no doubt has an immense, immense blessing. And that the, the dalil was in Surat Al-Maryam that, uh, that a, a pious woman 
was having immense amounts of fruits and signs of all types of activities being delivered by Divinely Presence into her niche. And that the Prophet of Allah whose du'a was not accepted for 90 years entered into the niche, witnessed the miracle, made du'a and Sayyidina Jibreel appeared immediately. So your prayer was answered. So means it doesn't matter about maqam and station or who somebody is and who somebody isn't. When something's holy, it's holy. And Allah wants the servant to be humble enough to say, oh this is holy and immediately have a heart that is clean enough to pray. Sayyidina Zakariya was humble, a big prophet of Allah He was the caretaker of the temple of Bani Israel. But immediately we realized this lady is powerful and loved by Allah immediately made du'a, immediately Sayyidina Jibreel appeared says, your, your du'a was just accepted. So they've been waiting the whole time for him to make that du'a. So this is the way, the way is based on humility, good manners, good character and to seek out that which has blessings and to receive from those blessings inshaAllah. <coughs> As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. If we suspect ourselves to be of those who are of pomp and glitter, but we are in the circles of zikr, is our zikr still worthy of nazar from Prophet Please forgive me. Sure, everyone's worthy of nazar of Prophet Pomp and glitter, that verse that we went over was the command from Allah to the holy eyes of Prophet that don't pass the people of zikr with your nazar for the pomp and glitter because they make a lot of noise, they have a lot of activities. It's maybe it's interesting to look at but the Divinely nazar and barakah and blessings are upon the people whom are making dhikr. But Allah uses in that Surah Ayatul Kareem is be patient with them. So means that not everybody is at a perfected state but anybody whom is making an attempt to be with the people of zikr, to make dhikrullah, to make salawat upon Sayyidina Muhammad to make their ibadah and their worship, this is Allah's way of saying, do you want to gain more of that nazar? Then stop that and do more of this. And then you become more balanced in life that anytime you need more nazar will do the things that get nazar. So then they do their mawlid, they do their zikrs, they make their salawats and those worshipness bring the nazar. So if going to the FIFA soccer game doesn't bring the nazar because that's pomp and glory, right? But if at some time people want to sit somewhere and do some salawats and they're in need of a relief, Allah gives that relief. That if you want the nazar of Prophet then make your salawat and durood because that will bring those lights upon your soul. But they try to keep a balanced life to understand how to bring those blessings inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how do I fight OCD insanity? OCD, inshaAllah. Try to make your salawats, your meditation, take the medi medication. Anytime we, we deal with uh, any type of illness is that you have to always follow medical advice first. So that you always have to follow. Everybody has a handicap in life given by Allah whether it's a physical, mental. So you take your medicine, follow your medical advice. And then you try to build your meditation, build your connection, do your salawats and try your best with those energies to overcome waswas. Because it's just waswas coming too close and saying your wudu is not good, your wudu is not good. So it's not true. Make your salawats and then go do some gardening, put your hand in the dirt and do the gardening to fight shaitan. When he says you're not clean enough then say, okay and then go garden and put your hands in the dirt and make your salawats and don't be fearful of being dirty, go and put your hand in the dirt. So there's ways to combat that. 
But always make sure that you're taking medicine first and that you don't cut your medicine and then more and more difficult. So we said before, somebody can have heart disease, diabetes, they don't just stop their medicine because they feel they're going to be spiritual, you'll be dead. So you first take the medicine because this is the condition which Allah has given to us and then we do our spiritual practices asking, Ya Rabbi please if, if you can relieve me of this sickness so that I don't need to take that medicine but if not then I'm good with whatever you have destined for me, inshaAllah. As Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, is the maqam of Sayyidina Khidr in Turkey as Shaykh Nazim al Haqqani, our grandmaster, was visiting there? Sorry for bad adab. No. Alhamdulillah, inshaAllah, there, there are portals for Sayyidina Khidr salam in, I would imagine, many places. So, anyone stuck at sea and asks for Rijalullah that Sayyidina Khidr salam would be of service to them. There's in the Grand Mosque in Bursa, there's a, an art that has the wow, that is a portal for the presence of Sayyidina Khidr salam. And Umayyad Masjid in Damascus, again there's a little plaque that says Abbas Khidr and that's again a portal for him. So anyone who sits at those portals and connect their heart, if they have good manners then they will be seeing Sayyidina Khidr right in front of them, present with them. But it's based on, on, on good manners. Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sultanul Awliya, Qatti Sallallahu Sirah described that I think the, the story was he was with a, a shaykh and he was sitting down and there was somebody in front of them and said to him, This is Sayyidina Abbas Khidr. The other one looked at him and was kind of astonished then somebody walked by and asked that who's who's shaykh and shaykh Daghestani said, oh this is my shaykh and the other one said, he's not my shaykh and I'm not his shaykh and as soon as that other man walked away he could no longer see who was sitting on the carriage with them. And then he asked Sayyidina Daghestani, Sultan al-Awliya that, what, what, what's going on? He said, he's right there but because of your bad manners you can't see him anymore. So means this was a way of teaching us that this is based on good manners. So the one whom has good manners, good character, meditating, contemplating, asking to open their heart, then Allah will reveal to them what Allah wants to reveal. And again it's not something hard or something difficult. So these are the, the systems in which Allah has given to believers that even the circle of zikr is a portal into paradise. Prophet described, don't miss the halakas of zikrs because they are the circles of paradise with angels all the way to the throne of Ar-Rahman bringing mercies and blessings and taking away difficulties from people. And that's in holy hadith describing the, the circles of zikr. So these are portals of energy that Allah has given to us to use specially in last days. So imagine when sick and in difficulty and last days there's oppression everywhere, well then open up a circle of paradise, immediately gather and start making your zikr. And the angels come and circumambulate the group and bring a, a, a rahmah from Allah's presence and take away the difficulties from that association. And the, the Chechens were very familiar with this and they were, they were quite a, a, a force to be dealt with. And they have a tremendous history that when they didn't have anything and things were being attacked upon them, they merely began their halakas, their zikrs, shaykh would make a du'a and they could pick up rocks and cast the rock and the rock would destroy everything, they didn't need anything else. And then in Ayatul Qur'an where Allah described, it's not your hand that threw but it was our hand. So it means the zikrs, the shaykhs they can activate all of these things. So this is not something of any difficulty. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs. Please support the button below 
the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.